Hey guys, it's David and I am back out of YouTube retirement and it's, there's like a whole nother thing behind it. That's a whole nother video, but the point is, is I'm back and I have a really, really interesting story to tell. So I had a sugar daddy, a couple. So I really didn't know that sugar daddies really existed. For some reason, it just seemed like all the people that I kind of like, that influenced me or just knew had a sugar daddy. Like, one of my favorite YouTubers, they had a couple sugar daddies and a lot of the people said that they didn't have to have sex with them to like, you know, get the sugar. At first, it just seems like a bad way to get money, you know, like just get a job, you know. Um, I had two jobs, so I'm not a bum. I just thought it was interesting how some guys and girls, you know, would invest that money into like college or, you know, good things, not just like getting shoes and stuff like that. So after months of searching, I finally found my first sugar dad. So all he wanted, he just wanted to go see a movie and he wanted someone to go with him. And I was like, okay, cool, you know. He lived like 30 miles away or like 20 or something. He, he drove all the way here to the closest theater to me and I would, didn't want to hop in his car. So I was like, you know, it's okay, I'll meet you there and I was just gonna walk. I thought it was like a mile or something. Turns out the theater was four miles away. Can I just add that it was like 110 degrees and I forgot that I'm human and need, you know, water to survive. Um, I was running very late. So I was sprinting my ass trying to get to that movie, you guys. There was like 0.4 miles left, but we were already kind of late and he was like, you know, let me come pick you up. Like I'll bring you there. And I was so nervous about it. I was like, I don't wanna do it. My friend was like, you know, just do it. Like, I know it sounds so bad. I arrived to the theater with this man cause it's like right down the road and I'm just gonna turn my location on and like send it to you, my, my friends. So, and I was like, pay attention and if we start going too far, call my mom. People always say like, he's a stranger, he could like kill you. And I'm just like, your neighbor could kill you. Your dog could kill you. Your mom could kill you. Your best friend could kill you. Your boyfriend could kill you. But turns out he brings me there, you know, he buys the tickets, he buys all the snacks and stuff. And we see the movie, it goes pretty well. And then he wants to drive me home. And I was like, okay, I don't want this man to know where I live. So I just had him drop me off at like the front of the neighborhood. And he gives me $60 just for seeing a movie with him. So I was like, I think I can do this. Like, this is a good way to get some money, you know? And the movie was only like two hours. Like I spent two hours with him and made $60, like. And then the next day he wanted to hang out again. And he was like, you know, let's go to the zoo, which I really, really wanted to go to so bad. We did everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. And he was just spending money. He was just like, basically giving me like whatever I wanted. And I was, I felt kind of bad about it, but you know, like he was the one who wanted to do it. Like I didn't force him into this, you know, we both agreed on it. I had a really fun time, you know, I got to see giraffes and stuff, which I'll insert right here. <laughs> it was really fun. But then after he didn't give me any money and I was like a little bit hurt by it, I was like, okay, I need the money, not like a good time. Cause you know, I can go have a good time on my own, but I really need to get this car cause I don't have a car, but I need a car. Whatever, you know, he spent a ton of money on me that day. I'll just wait and see what he does next time. The third time we go out, we see another movie, which was like a couple days ago, actually. He took me to a theater like across the state because it had like the reclining seats, you know. We go out to eat first at like this nice restaurant. And then we see uh, Neighbors 2, which was really funny. I had a really good time. Usually during movies, like I don't laugh too much. If I do, I might chuckle or I might laugh a little bit. You know, people were like looking at me and I was just like. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you can tell when a movie is like about to end, you know, like they get asked to prom, it's the prom night or like they get put out of jail or they get put in jail. You know, like the, conclu the, the concluding thing, you know, is happening. It's happening. And then I get a text from my mom. <laughs> my mom says, David, your aunt called me. We are where you're at the movies, but Asia mentioned you're dating a man 50 years old. My heart sank. My mother, one of the most open-minded people you'll ever meet. But like, if she doesn't agree with it, she's not really gonna say it to you. More the person that would like sit and just sip her tea and look at you, you know? I'm like, how do you explain to your mother that you're like hanging out with a 50 year old man just the fact that they were probably thinking that I was like, letting this man f me in the a 
like I was dropping it for him. No, I didn't do anything sexual with this man, nor did he ask or try to. I rarely ever get in trouble, but the past couple times, it was always because of like my cousin. I was thinking like, why the hell did she snitch on me? Like, why is she like, why is she being shady? Like, is there a snake in the room? Like, is that slithering I hear? Like, what's going on? But then again, like I'd always find out later that she didn't like really tell on me. Like people just found out. And yeah, like my aunt already knew something was up and like, I guess forced my cousin to tell her. We were like, okay, you know, it's whatever. For the next like three days, I was like thinking that me and my cousin were like enemies. Like I was like, I need to move out. Like, I need to get my own place. I need to do something because this is just not working. Like I can't sleep in the same room as somebody who's trying to like put me in jail or something. Like I can't do it. I can't do it. So the next like four days was awkward. Like we didn't talk about it. Like I was really there. I didn't say anything to anybody. But you know, my mom gave me the speech. Like, you know, you guys are on like the border of Mexico. Like they can snatch you up and take you across the border and put you in sex trafficking and nobody could get you. And I was like, I know all this stuff. I'm the type of person that if I'm gonna be doing something really dangerous, like I'm gonna make sure I have multiple plans to get myself out of the situation or protect myself which I did, I had a couple methods, and I was actually, I had like another sugar daddy that wanted to take me on trips and stuff. Like, okay, that's a little bit too much. Research, you know, looking for a sugar daddy, trying to gather as much information as you can. I had a good experience with it, besides getting cop car, but then again, like I'm 18, like, mm. But yeah, those are my experiences um, on having a sugar daddy and how I was exposed. And now my whole family knows. Thank you guys for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Comment down below what you guys want to see next. I'll see you guys whenever I make a video. <laughs> so this be my Snapchat. Y'all can go ahead and add me or whatever.